Hello, and welcome to the Documenting Your Research module of the Research Data Training Series. I am Paul Byrne, Research Data Services Librarian at Syracuse University Libraries. What we will be covering in this module are the need for good documentation, what should be included in the documentation, creating project level documentation, documenting all of your files, documenting your data, and documenting your computer program. First, a word about documentation. It is vitally important that you document everything you do. This serves as a record for yourself so that if you need to come back to your data at a later time, such as after you receive reviewer comments, or even the next day, you'll know what you did and why you did it. It also serves as a record for your team so that each person on your team knows what everyone else is doing. It is also a record for future users of your data so that they can understand your data and make proper use of it. A note before you begin. Remember that some funding agencies and data repositories have their own requirements for what needs to be documented and how it should be documented. Be sure to follow what they want right from the beginning so that you don't have to go back and redo everything later on. Even if you're not planning on sharing your data, it might be a good idea to find a repository in your field and follow their rules. This will provide more detailed guidelines for your project, and if you change your mind later on and do decide to share your data, you won't have to recreate your documentation. Remember though, every field has their own practices, so be sure to find one that most closely fits your project. Complete documentation includes a description of the project. You can think of this as a somewhat extended abstract a project diary in which you and all of your team members make a record of what was done and why and how, any lab notebooks and or written procedures, a file manifest which is a list of all the files associated with your project, a codebook data map data dictionary which are all terms for basically the same thing, and it's most basic a codebook is a list of all the variables in your data what they measure and how copies of all surveys and forms used to collect data all programs used to gather clean manipulate and analyze your data and any documentation that may have come with secondary data that you might have used and if you're creating or using any databases the database schema associated with it Let's talk about project level documentation. As mentioned, you should use a project diary. This is the date and time that you did something, what you did and how you did it, and why you did it, as well as any files associated with that activity. This is actually a fairly simple thing, but its importance can be overlooked. If you ever need to come back to your project at a later date, the project diary will remind you of what you did and why. Also, if you are working with other people, the project diary serves as a record for all team members. Let's turn now to documenting your files. As we said, you should keep a file manifest. This is a list of all files associated with the project. It should include the full path and file name, date that the file was created and modified and by whom, and the purpose of the file. Some data management plans and data repositories require you to provide a file manifest, so be sure that you provide it in the format that they want. Having a file manifest will help you to find the correct files you need, as well as making sure that when you deposit all your files to a repository, you have all the necessary files. You should use folders to organize your files. Don't just put everything all in one place. Have folders for your raw data, other folders for your working data, have another one for all your programs and output, 
a folder for your documentation, one for any supplementary materials you might have, and another one for your written reports and articles, etc. You should develop a folder and file naming scheme. File name should be descriptive and indicate something about the purpose of the file. It should include a version number. You can substitute the word final for the very last version. Using dates in the form of year, month, and day will not only help you find what the most recent file is, you will also be able to sort the files in date order. You should not use special characters such as an ampersand or exclamation points and do not use spaces or periods in your file names as some software will not allow this in the file name. Just an important note about all those files that you'll be creating. Back them up. Make regular copies of all your files and keep them on media separate from your daily working files. Better yet, Make several copies of all your files and keep them on several media separate from your working files. Thumb drives, USB drives, memory sticks are not a good choice. They are easily lost or stolen, they get destroyed, and they do get corrupted all on their own. CDs, placing files in services such as Dropbox or Google Drive, are much better choices. Let's move on to documenting your data. As we mentioned, you'll need to create a codebook or a data map or data dictionary, which are all basically the same thing. It lists all the variables in the order they appear in the data file, all the variable names and labels, as well as all value labels used in the data file. Providing means and frequencies are helpful to future users so that they know that they've read your data correctly but are not absolutely necessary. You should also include the full text of any questions and possible answers. Remember that variable and value labels in some software such as SAS or SPSS may not allow enough characters to fully describe the question. You wouldn't want anything to get lost in translation. Be sure to include all formulas for calculating derived or computed variables. Also include other manipulations that you may have done to protect respondent confidentiality, such as top or bottom coding. If you're using secondary data, you should indicate if a particular variable is primary, meaning you collected it yourself, or if it is part of the secondary data. If you're using more than one secondary source, indicate from which source that variable came. Remember, proper citation of secondary data is a must. Most will come with a suggested citation. If not, check the style guide for your discipline or the journal you'll be submitting to to determine the correct format. Now let's talk about documenting your computer programs. Computer programs remind you of what you did, how you did it, and why you did it. They also let others know what you did, how you did it, and why you did it. And very importantly, programs are a way of reproducing your efforts in the event of a catastrophe. If your data or output files get corrupted or lost, and you've done everything by code, you'll just have to rerun the code to reproduce your data or output and get back to where you were without having to redo everything all over again. Your program should have a header section with an explanation of what the program does, any other files that may be necessary for this particular program to run properly, who created the program and on what date, who modified the program and on what dates, and of course what was modified. Be sure to use comments throughout the program. These provide some extra explanation for somebody who may not be familiar with what you have done. Finally, try to keep similar commands together. Keep commands that create variables together, keep commands that analyze the data together, etc. So in conclusion, 
Proper and complete documentation will allow you to keep track of what you have done and how you have done it. This is very important if you have not worked with the data for a while, such as coming back and addressing reviewers' comments. It is also important if you need to explain or justify what you did at a later time, such as at your dissertation defense. And it is crucial for other people to be able to make proper use of your data. Just remember, documentation is something you plan for. It is the first step in the research data process and the last. It is not something you begin when the project is over. Thank you. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Our contact information can be found on the web page. Now, on to the next module, Collecting Your Data.